All right. So I'll just uh, repeat for the recording that, um, yeah, Salesforce, uh, Salesforce has been aware of the security issues on Realm Team, you know, earlier, thanks to Kennedy's involvement. We started taking steps already on some of these issues. We have our own, I think, as you know, we have our own uh, copy that was, you know, forked or copied before, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, early in the stages. We are applying the same fixes in our own copy. Uh, and we are also doing a proof of concept right now. I think you, all of you are aware here that there's teams in self, there's team members in Salesforce such as Dayan and uh, JD, uh, John David Dalton, which are working on the real team. Our, uh, what we want to do is to actually incorporate and use the real team as is, as, a, as an NPM dependency pretty much mm -hmm. in the Salesforce code. Uh, I'm not sure that that's going to happen like very, very soon, but we have a POC with successful tests and it looks like we are able to do that. I just don't know whether we want to do that like for this release that we're working on or yeah. the next one. But but uh, but the security issues we're aware of, we have fixed them in our own uh, copy. And of course, we have to retest everything when we uh, actually use the Realm scheme uh, from NPM. Okay. But, uh, yeah, no, no surprises, no, 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 no troubles so far. Good, good. So the process that we had uh, worked out for you, and in terms of having everybody in our disclosure tool on that loop. Um, were you? I don't know if you, if you tried to, but were you able to see the private fork on GitHub? On GitHub, in which Jeff was making those changes. Oh, I haven't tried that. Let me let me go to. You want me to try that? I I can see. I'm just right now looking. The looking at the, fork, uh, the private uh, fork is gone now. Oh, okay. Apparently, okay. as soon as we, yeah, I'm hearing that. Echo. Yeah, I'm hearing that. Echo. Okay, okay. Then, um, then no. Okay. Uh, uh, um, I think it, I has, think to it be has to be coming in the manuals in the microphone, microphone because, because the other two are muted. The echo. Um, um, so uh, yeah, so apparently the GitHub private, private fork is, is deleted as soon as we publish the advisory. And, and while we were working, we were working on that, that everybody would be able to see that fork and, and to comment on pull requests there. there. But I think but I got at least one of them. Only, only, only the only organization that the private fork is in. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I'm, I'm so sorry, but I, I see you struggling. I, I, I yeah. muted you, Manuel. Uh, uh, sorry, I had to because there, there was uh, too much feedback. Um, can you, um, yeah, check your yeah, microphone. Manuel, un unmute your microphone when you're ready to talk. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks. Um, so apparently, the uh, the private fork is deleted as soon as you um, publish the advisory, and apparently, only people in the Agoric organization could see the private fork. Or at least, I got one report that, that somebody else was not able to go and look at that. So, a thing I want po folks to think about: we should make the decision now, but at some point, we might want to move the Realm Shim uh, and maybe the CES repositories out of out of the Agoric GitHub organization and into a different one that we're all members of, like maybe the Dr. Seth's one. Um, and then we can, can uh, uh, all see those private forks and have a, a group for kind of security stuff in there. Um, might be a little bit easier in the future. That makes sense, but that would still, it would still be published as an NPM package to the public NPM river, right? right? That's right. But what would be, what would be the, the, you know, the ampersand uh, namespace that it would be published from? Uh, we're currently publishing both Realms, Shim, and CES unprefixed. So on NPM, that's just Realm, Shim, and it's just CES. So the, the GitHub organization that hosts the repository for it is independent of the NPM name that gets used. Um, okay, and it's gonna stay like that. Yeah, yeah. Can I, uh, can I uh, uh, clarify, um, one thing about you know moving forward from here because namespacing is becoming this uh, buzz buzz discussion everywhere and you know um, uh, at namespace or at org or at user um, what I'm seeing and I might be wrong everybody may have um, uh, some insights here is that as you're logged in and publish the package it automatically becomes at your scope slash package and if that name is not published it also becomes unscoped that name uh, unless you actually publish with a scope slash name 
I believe that a package actually does get published under your scope. And I might be mistaken there. Um, um, so, so could we verify, um, um, could, could, could everybody give some in, you know, insights, especially if they are a lot more familiar than me? What I'm observing, I, I would not be surprised if we are abusing the namespace thing on NPM. Um, I, I have not talked to enough people. Michael, you'd have a better vision view on this than I would. Um, <clears throat> not talked to enough people to say how they're using it to see if using it as a, this is, so like we, we have a package called swing set that, which is kind of our, our main, you know, VAT execution host thing. And we have a, a NPM package called at agoric slash swing set VAT. And sort of like, I would feel a little bit silly claiming this name in, in the global namespace until we get this thing a bit more established. And so kind of scoping it to us made more sense. I don't know if that's how those names are supposed to be used or not, but that's, that's the pattern we've settled into. We published that from a repository whose package.json says name colon at agoric slash swing set VAT. And if I go to NPM and I search for swing set VAT, I only find at agoric slash swing set VAT. Um, I have seen a tutorial that talks about how to get something published. I think it was in the context of a Rust uh, WASM kind of thing. It was like how to take your Rust package and publish it onto NPM as, as a WASM bundle. And that had some defaults in it that encouraged people to namespace that stuff. But I think that might have been because you don't really want a tutorial for people coming in from outside your ecosystem that encourages them to go and like pollute the global namespace um, w without first getting to know what's there and, and, and making, just making a more thoughtful decision about it. Um, but I, I, so I haven't seen anything that like automatically adds a prefix like that or automatically strips it, but I have to admit I've not done enough in there to, to feel confident about knowing that's the case. You're still muted. Uh, yeah, it was a rather hasty uh, observation on my part. Um, I think it was on my mind at some point. Uh, but the next question would be um, uh, the common uh, open source efforts um, like there are uh, branded efforts of, of, of you know, individual uh, members, but uh, since there's uh, the um, idea of collective effort, um, um, would we be interested in having a namespace or an organization registered uh, to make sure we get a name that is, um, you know, um, um, more useful than, than a matter of fact. Um, you know, if, if um, people start reserving namespaces and doing those cheap URL tricks. Uh, <laughs> That's right? a good question. I think, uh, yeah, I know that they discourage like name squatting um, and reserving stuff ahead of time. Uh, but I think we've talked about maybe, you know, compartments shim is the next most likely package that we would want a name for. And that's a particular name we would want. Um, so, so I think what you're saying is maybe we should register at cess or at Dr. Cess or something as a, as a prefix to use and then put some of these future packages underneath that prefix. I, I squatted safe modules, if that's okay, as an org. Uh, it's it's uh, just I'm I'm clarifying that the intent of me blocking it was um, the fact that I thought it would um, be something that this group would want. It's not oh, yeah. for any per personal, uh, yeah. except of course uh, a one yeah, million thank, thank dollar for... royalty for for every package you want to publish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank thank you for the foresight for that. That's good. As a feedback, I personally think it makes sense to 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 do to use judge fully well the namespacing. I think it was there because before that, you know, it was a little bit more of the Wild West. And yes, you have to use very long names to have a package distinguished from one another. I think it's just a better mechanism. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's an organization, but more of a group. So I think, I think uh, you know, having something like secure modules, it does make sense. Uh, and there's a collaboration of multiple organizations, perhaps, in that uh, namespace. Yeah, I think there's there's a larger level, a, a higher level sort of branding question to, to discuss at some point. Um, and, and that's also why I want to have people think about the GitHub organization that this stuff fits into. There are some practical, there's some practical utility 
to moving this stuff into a different GitHub organization, which is that to add, um, what, was the, what was the problem? When doing the uh, security bugs for Realms Shim, I had to add everybody in the disclosure pool like one at a time into the list of collaborators for that security advisory in the draft stage. And I could add a team of people, but I could only add a team of Agoric people. And so if we were all in like a Dr. Seth's GitHub organization, we could have a team of, of Realms security disclosure pool and just add that team all at once. Um, and the other issue is that if there's a private repository, um, then you have to be a member of the organization to look at it. And for a free organization, you're allowed to have, I think like three private repositories. For a paid organization, you can have as many as you want, but you're paying like nine bucks a month for each one. And so, you know, we wanted to have everybody brought in to kind of collaborate on that particular thing. And if it were free, then we would have just added everybody like to the organization uh, so, so they could be in that, in that repo. But we didn't really want to pay nine bucks a month kind of forever for a whole bunch of folks that aren't actually Agoric folks. Um, so having a different organization that actually reflects like what the affiliation is seemed like it kind of make, would, make, would make more sense. Makes sense. So yeah, so that, that's all that I really wanted to contribute. I wanted to make sure, I wanted to check in and make, see if there was anything more we could do uh, from our side about helping with the security fix there. And I kind of collected a, a couple of issues that we ran into during the process of that, that bug fix um, and want to do a little bit of a post-mortem at some point, but I think I want to do it with when more people are around. So maybe, maybe next week or two weeks from now. Definitely being in the disclosing, it, it's a really great help. That's really, really good. Very, very good. Thank you. Good, good. I'm, I'm glad that worked out. Okay, cool. Well, that was it for me. I'll let you all get on to more technical talks and I got to run off to another thing. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Hey, see you, Brian. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be having too much else to talk about today. <laughs> um, was there anything that you were interested in, Manuel, as well? Or? No, actually, this was exactly the topic, just to hear you know, more thoughts on, on future, you know, future plans for disclosing the NPM thing, because again, Salesforce is moving towards uh, adopting and using the Realm Sheem, you know, as it is. And so, you know, anything, anything around that becoming, you know, part of the, part of the open source community, that's exactly what I wanted to just hear about. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad nothing more really at this point. Okay, cool. Uh, Sala, was there any other topics you thought? Um, uh, just, um, uh, I guess, side topics um, um, related to the idea of disclosing, but I mean, it's really a tangent at this point. Um, it's more like I'm plugging my own. Um, so, so I've been working on this markout renderer. So it's, it's like markdown, but, but like, it's not like markdown has this legacy of server side render, rendering, but rather it's uh, DOM first. Um, um, it has a DOM first, um, um, you know, uh, rendering pipeline. It's meant to actually be client side rendered. It's very lightweight. Um, I, every time I'm, I look at the Agoric feed, I, I just wonder if, um, you know, um, if it would be um, a good step for you know, for bringing this into um, like there's a disclosure feed or blogs or something like that, um, I would love for it to actually um, be a, a way to create a um, safe client side rendered alternative to having um, a convert markdown and, and other kinds of you know material. Um, through servers, so so it's just like it cuts the back end. It's it's all um, going from pure markdown um, syntax to actual rendered rich HTML content. Um, so I, I guess you know we can talk a little bit more um, one on one, and if you have time, or you know we can bring that up later on. Um, just you know thought I would throw it out there. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I had a question. Do, do either of you know of a JavaScript API for communication streams, like a general abstraction for that stuff? Is a readable stream and writable stream the, the basic end all and be all of that kind of thing? Uh, uh, so I know I know Node has um, 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 an effort for uh, W uh, like what WAC stream implementations, and they come as a as a, a, a like a separate package. But let let me give you a link there. Um, so we are talking about just the general stream implementation at this point. Um, so GitHub. Uh, Yeah, let me find it quickly. Yeah, so here's a link. Um, so, I'm pretty sure. Um, there's missing context here uh, <laughs> because I, I remember last we last I heard um, you know from the um, from M Kalina uh, I, the name full name escapes me at this point uh, there there was more to it than just um, what is in this repo so so I'm sorry about. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, the repo is a lot more <laughs> emptier than uh, the context I had in memory, uh, but uh, maybe it's on NPM. Um, so let me see what the package manifest points to. Yeah, well, I guess more digging is. Uh... I, I see a little um, slideshow on his website that the readme looks to. Yeah. Um... But anyway, that's probably um, just faulty um, residual memory in, on my part. <laughs> um, but, but I mean, that was the only exciting um, mention that I recall of, of this kind of thing. Um, there are libraries, um, you know, that, um, that also used at some point, some, some lighter weight ones, uh, but I have to dig a bit for that. Um, uh, are you looking more towards um, a browser compact or more towards yeah. uh, a fraction? Uh, yeah, browsing compatible and uh, or, or maybe just a general abstraction that all we really want is something where it's a bi-directional stream. You can put data into it. You can, you can be notified when data comes to it. And that's all I care about, that it does its own framing kind of thing. But uh, that's the API that I'd like to have various things. And type definitions are obviously a must. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that that would be a good. Uh, that would be a good. Um, I, I think we can we can open this kind of thing on. Um, What's it called again? OCAP JS. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a kind of a good discussion to, to read out there and people uh, pitch in because I don't think you know we'll find the answer <laughs> um, that quickly, at least. Um, but yeah, so so there is a published package on. NPM from you know the same repo that I just showed that basically has zero lines of code. <laughs> so, um, 
talk about, um, um, you know, parking things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I guess Manuel dropped. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, so, so, um, so I, I raised that, I propped that render and I apologize. Um, um, maybe we can stop the recording or do you want to continue recording? I don't know. Oh, we can stop.